Oh, good afternoon. We're, we're back. We took a week off because of little technical problems, but that's all been solved. So my name is Chris Roberts, and I want to welcome Dave, uh, Andy Bahannon, who's the um, director of the Keene Park and Recreation Department. Thank you, Chris. Pleasure to be here. Thank so we're going to have a few, before we get into the media of what you do and what you're responsible for, we're going to have a few questions that are coming up. Sure. One of them, does it, we're going to have an upcoming funeral um, from the historic perspective, this this week or is it next week? Is it tenth? It's actually this Wednesday, this Wednesday. Uh, August fourth at ten o'clock in the Washington Street Cemetery. We had um, some remains uh, brought back to the city of Keene, and they've actually, um, for lack of better words, bounced around a little bit. They uh, were buried, uh, excavated here in 1882 in the old Court Street Cemetery, um, and they became the uh, possession of the Cheshire County Historical Society. Uh, from there, they went to uh, the state. The state had them for quite a while, and it was discovered that these remains were, in fact, uh, three individuals. They were actually able to label one of the individuals as Mrs. Goodchild, and then the others, uh, they were still un unknown. They went to the state um, office, then they went to, there was a couple of museums up in the New London area, and they uh, then transferred them back to the state, and now they've become in our possession, and we want to put them, uh, give them a proper resting point. Um, so they're going to be buried this this Wednesday in the Washington Street Cemetery. The um, In the letter that you provided to the city council, yep. There were some of the local organizations, local businesses that were helping out with this yes. for proper burial? Yep. Uh, Foley Funeral Home uh, donated the, uh, the casket, if you will, for the bones to uh, be placed in. And the um, stone was donated by Keene Monument. Um, they, we obviously do a lot of work with them, being in the cemetery department. And both uh, Bob Deluzio and Jay Blanchard um, were great assets to us and helped us in this in this process. Because I know around the country, in the nineteen in the eighteen hundreds and early nineteen hundreds, it was it was kind of cool to have human remains in your in your um, museum and other places. But now, it's kind of changing. We want to get the people back properly buried the, the right way. Yes, and um, there was some extensive uh, research done on these three individuals. Uh, obviously, try to learn their names um, and uh, wanted to find out if they were Native Americans, uh, which they were not. There's a special uh, law that handles that. Yeah, exactly. And so um, then they were transferred to us, and they've been in our possession, and uh, I'm pleased to be able to give them the proper service that they deserve. Uh, may it be over 100 years <laughs> later, but um, they'll have a final resting place. So what's, what's the lady's name? Mrs. Goodchild. So Mrs. Goodchild will now have a name, and she'll be put yep. to rest properly. Yep, yes. And um, before we move from the, um, the cemetery and the funeral, we've been, ha we've been having a lot of problem with vandalism at the cemetery. How, how's that going? How's helping you? Fix some of the damage. We were able to replace um, most of the stones, uh, or reset them, I should say, uh, with a lot of the help from Keene Monument. Um, but our staff, that was right before Memorial Day, we had all hands on deck to go forward, reset a lot of the stones, put them up in their, um, as best we could, do the repairs. Um, and there are a few that are still remain broken, but the cost of those repairs would be extensive, and that's something that we don't budget for. Um, it is the 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 stone is the own, owner's responsibility. Um, so, and a lot of these folks are deceased or no longer a part of this area, so it's very hard to, to difficult to contact them. So they we do the best that we can to make sure their memorial is is kept up looking nice. And for someone who, who likes to study history and go around, we have a lot of stones that date back into the 1700s. Yeah. If they're damaged, that's a priceless, it's lost forever. You can't yeah. repair those. Yeah, it was very unfortunate. The amount of damage that was done um, in Greenlawn was extensive, uh, 20, 
think it was 26 stones all together. Uh, that particular cemetery had a ration of, of damage uh, done pr in earlier months. Uh, a couple stones here and there. Uh, a couple drivers um, went in intoxicated, hit a few stones. Uh, those incidents didn't make the paper, but they happened, and uh, we took care of those. Um, we found a couple of those individuals uh, to make those get the cost taken care of, uh, but others, they go unknown and unless we find them. Now, moving on to um, the skate park. The skate park has been, some people are favorable, some people are not. Some people think skaters are hooligans. Other people say they're just regular athletes like, for example, the X Games, which are going on right now in Los Angeles. We recently had what was called the Skate Jam. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, we, um, it was a program that I started up a couple of years ago, and I was down there looking at the talent that was in the park. And these kids really know how to <laughs> skate and bike, and they were doing tricks that I was amazed that and the athletic ability i was like we need to showcase this and at the time we were doing an event called the washington street street cafe where we were bringing bands up to the rec center and i said what if we bring the music down to the skate park and do some type of live entertainment event so um, we created the ramp jam got a bunch of sponsors all, a lot of local community uh, contributes to this event and uh, had a fun competition, if you will, where they just kind of, everybody skates for, or bikes for three minutes, and then we crown a winner, uh, all local judges, and have a DJ, free drinks, free T-shirts, uh, a lot of sponsors, and good exposure for the kids in the skate park. And then when you talk about sponsors, didn't the, the, if I remember correctly, what the Keene Police Department associ uh, the Association donated like $150 to help cover some of the expenses? The Keene Police Benevolent Association donated $150 to help offset the cost of the uh, printing of the T-shirts. Um, we also had uh, Ted Shoe and sure. Sports was another big sponsor. And um, we have numerous sponsors, so I hate to start listing <laughs> several of them. But a lot of the restaurants uh, in the downtown area, especially, all donated like a $5 gift card. Uh, and so those were prizes. So every kid walked away with a T-shirt and um, a $5 gift card uh, to some place down, downtown. So it kind of helps those merchants because you know they're going to walk in and spend more than $5 at a whack. And that's our whole purpose. If, if they can spend ten dollars and five dollars is coming back to them and uh, we appreciate their support and the kids that are involved with it we had over 30 participants before we came on air we were talking about i could travel a lot and you've been traveling and we've seen skate parks around the country some of them are pretty elaborate and we've had a skate park committee that's been looking at a possibility of a new skate park in Keene. Mm -hmm. do you have so many ideas um, we came back with uh, six different locations as a, as a possibility um, of, of a new site, uh, some of which were city property and others that were not. And we felt that in order to maximize the best skate park location, it had to be a multi-use area. In other words, our current location is a single-use activity. It's strictly skateboarding or biking. If we were to put it in a multi-use area, there would be a children's playground, maybe a walking path, maybe a soccer field, something else that is other activities going on at the same time. We felt that was especially important because it would reduce the amount of activi negative activity that was happening in the skate park. And um, this model has been used all across the country very successfully. It's been known that if you just put a skate park in the middle of nowhere with nothing around it, trouble happens. Um, unfortunate, you know, drug use may increase or be purchased, uh, you know, buying, selling. Um, so we want those negative things uh, away from uh, a facility that we're going to put major dollars into it. Um, and that's the skate park committee is now looking at fundraising for this particular, uh, the move um, and building a new park. Because it's, 
not going to be cheap. It's going to be expensive. And we were talking about whether it's the X Games or talking about how great athletes these are. <clears throat> There's a world of difference between the skate, the skateboarders and the bike who are really athletes. They're not the kids that are going to go out and get drunk or get, no. get drugs in their system and do stupid things because they realize it's exciting, but it's also dangerous. Yeah, there's, there's a good group of, of kids or young adults uh, down at the skate park and watching them, they, you know, they have jobs, they do well in school. Uh, this is their outlet. You know, they may, they may not fit into a roster on a baseball team or a basketball team, and, and this is their one outlet. They may, uh, may have that intrinsic value that they need to be individuals and express themselves differently. And they do that through skateboarding or, or biking. And uh, we've made some changes that didn't cost the city any money uh, down in that area. Move some parking from one side to another. There was a reserved parking right in front of the skate park. We moved that to the side and put the public spaces right in front. Sent, we put some picnic tables down so the kids were no longer hanging off the, um, the bleachers. Uh, off the, <laughs> off the fence. They're now over to the bleachers and on the skate, on the, on the tables. They're hanging out there, and they're no longer bothering the, the neighbors, um, which is a positive thing, and it didn't cost us any money. So those little things go a long way uh, to the community, and I think the skateboarders and bikers appreciated the picnic tables because it's a place to hang out now. When you talk about make, not making the football team, or the, a lot of people would say Sean White is not very athletic, but oh. if you see what he does on that board and what he does in the Olympics, he's a top-notch athlete. Top-notch athlete. He's uh, amazing to watch. Name recognition. My eight-year-old daughter doesn't know too many athletes, but Sean White, she knows. And that's what the commercial power of the X Games has to do. And we have, you know, I saw read in the paper the other day, a kid over in Ringe uh, who's made it to the X Games, and we had uh, somebody over in um, Vermont uh, locally who was training and possibly could have got to the X Games and part of a Disney XD uh, show, which I, it's really neat. We have some great mm -hmm. talent there, and you saw that with the Ramp Jam. It really came out. Now, um, moving on to something that's um, a little bit more, more serious. When we have the, the 100 Nights, the homeless shelter, we have another, a number of other homeless shelters that in Keene are mm -hmm. pretty filled up. We had the incident last um, winter concerning behind Hannaford's. But, and then we go back to a recent article in the King Sentinel about a census taker talking about how people are going homeless, how families are disappearing because of the cost, because people don't make a lot of money. Well, as I read about New Hampshire, parks and other places are now becoming more, more homes for homeless during the winter. Do we have a potential problem, or do we have a problem in, on some of our areas, like the campgrounds or some of the other areas, like Robin Hood Park? There's the, there's the potential for the problem to exist. Um, with, uh, that's a definite. Um, I think one of the positive things here in, in Keene is our parks get a lot of use, and we have a lot of people hiking our trails. Our trails program just ended, so they've been cleaning <coughs> them all summer long. And uh, so there's eyes and ears out there, and if they see something suspicious in the um, parks, there's no camping allowed, no fires allowed in any of our parks, with the exception of the campground. Uh, then they call our office immediately, and our response is to find the exact location from the caller and go out and... Uh, talk with these individuals, explain to them that there's no uh, camping or fires allowed on the pr city property and move them, move them along. Um, and if necessary, provide them the resource numbers uh, to call uh, for them to say, okay, this is the best place for you to go. Or, you know, we, we take, use their belongings, bring them to the police station and let them uh, send them off in the right direction. The, um, from personal, when I was going to King State College, I worked at Park and Rec 2 to 10 to make money to help pay for college. Yep. Do you still hire kids, college students, and high school students to help them, to help you during the summer? 
they're our lifeblood. <laughs> they're all our seasonal employees. There, uh, without them, we wouldn't have the success that we do. Uh, the, having the college here in Keene is such a resource. In um, I'm heavily involved with our state parks and rec association, and I see what the other communities have, and they rely solely upon the. Um, the high school students and we're fortunate enough to have college students as well as very good high school students in the area but the college students are usually early education majors uh, PE ph major, physical physical, e physical education <coughs> majors uh, or environmental uh, students at not only Keene State College but Antioch University so we're very fortunate to have the talent pool that we do and as a result our staff, I feel, um, is one of the best uh, in this area. Um, you know, we train them well. Uh, we go through two or three days of, of training, safety, uh, procedures, uh, first aid, uh, CPR, and um, programmatically uh, different things to look for. So they get a good education outside of school. And it gives them experience to further themselves as an educator or a teacher or whoever they might be uh, when they leave uh, Keene State College. So I feel like we've got a little bit of a training ground at the Parks and Rec Department for them. The um, How's the swimming pools going? I, you refurnished, was it Robin Hood last Robin Hood, year? Yep. And uh, that pool is crystal clear. It's beautiful. Um, we haven't had any problems uh, since then. We've made a couple of repairs uh, as a result of the, the, the major repair. And uh, all our numbers are up. Uh, our swim lessons are, are bringing in more revenue than they have in the past. And our daily numbers are up uh, as a result. Um, it's still, on the weekends, fairly quiet. And for those people who go, I said, don't publicize because it's like having our own <laughs> private pool. Uh, and it's true because, you know, there may be four or five families hanging out at the pool on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. When when I was a kid, I knew Saturday <laughs> and Sunday afternoon, it was packed. Um, but it, they're a great resource. You know, the, we always have put good lifeguards on duty and well-trained, and it's a great place to go. And your summer program for the kids that was age six to what was it? Eleven. That's yep. ending in a couple of weeks. Excuse That's me. ending in two more weeks. Uh, we're it's an eight week program. Uh, we are a uh, non licensed um, or a license exempt uh, facility, being a municipality, Parks and Rec Department. So we um, we can only run eight weeks, um, and uh, for forty hours we do pay uh, extra. For that extra time frame if you have late pickup yep. um, but it's a positive place for kids to come hang out during the summertime uh, it's very structured uh, they have arts and crafts games uh, with physical activity reading uh, and they just have fun in the morning have some snacks go to the pool in the afternoon Hopefully we've tired them out uh, for their parents when they pick them up and uh, they're ready to go for the next day. And we do a lot of entertainment with them as well. The, um, my two grandsons go to the one at yep. um, Maplewood, yes, Maplewood Park. For my daughter, it's a life send because the cost is so much, such better, so much better than regular daycare. She would not have been able to afford eight weeks of daycare in the summer. And I'm pretty sure she's like a lot of other hard-working women, sometimes mm -hmm. single families, that can't afford quality daycare so the kids get dumped, whoever can take them. Right. And we, um, we are a program in the, in the summertime, uh, very affordable. It's $55 for the week uh, for residents. Um, and that we look at it as a quality experience, uh, and we put the right amount of staff so our ratios are low. Um, you know, we have standards that we meet. Um, we try to go one to ten or less, and that's what we staff it at. And on any one given day, our, we would be at that one to ten if all the children showed up. But not all the children show up on a regular basis, so our ratios are usually about one to nine, one to eight. 
um, which is provides for a quality experience uh, for parents and the children. And this will I'll lead this into the after school program. You're really tied in with the, the Cheshire Medical Center on 2020, get the kids 60 minutes plus of activity yep. every day. Again, my two grandsons even thought they've had a bunch of junk food this summer. They weigh a heck of a lot less <laughs> than they did before the summer because you keep them active. Uh, our, that's our whole focus with the CATCH program. CATCH stands for a Coordinated Approach to Childhood Health. And um, the program started back in 2005 where we received a grant from the Diabetes Foundation to focus on type 2 uh, diabetes, the reduction. And we started CATCH. We didn't, wasn't really weren't sure what the program was. And then we've kind of developed it over the course of the, and this year we'll, we'll probably have 70 children participate in the program. They come, uh, arrive, and this will be the first year that we're going to go from the day one of school mm -hmm. to the last day of school. Um, so that's something new this year for parents, uh, so they don't have to wait two weeks. They have something right away, mm -hmm. uh, which is a positive thing. And um, we've increased the fee by $10 for the year, so still 175 is very reasonable sure. for any family. You know, we do that in installments so parents don't have to pay it up right up front. Um, we can space it out over time and pay as you go uh, type of thing. So it's very affordable. Staff is well trained. Uh, we focus on the physical activity piece and the nutrition awareness. So people can make healthy choices, not only during our after school program, but take it home. That's one of the things that we look to our staff as being change agents. And if we can get them to help change the children and the families to be, live healthier lifestyles, we're doing our job. And uh, it's, it's fun. That's the bottom line. It's fun and they enjoy it. Yeah, I know it works because, again, my grandsons, when they're in the house in the morning and before they get ready to school and we're putting snacks and I say, nope, I don't want that snack because I can't get my sticker and I have to get so many Snickers before I can do this. Yep. And so it is the change. But also, it's more than just healthy food and exercise. You also work on making sure they do their homework and yeah. other stuff. So it's just it's it, a free for all. Yeah, that's a, it's a major component of our program is having the staff, um, the children arrive between uh, 3.30 and 4. And that's their designated snack and homework time. So if we ask them right when they come through the door, uh, good afternoon, how are you? Do you have any homework today? And uh, we want to help the parents out by doing homework uh, in the afternoon. Like I said, we have early education majors so they can um, uh, get assisted, you know, practice when they get to the classroom and begin to um, take care of that need for the child and work with them on their homework so and then they go into the physical activity piece and if they're all done haven't finished their homework and that's five o'clock and from five to five thirty they can go back and work on their homework and get it all done before they get to home well it's a good thing we we don't leave in one of those communities out large dodgeball or some of those other ones it'd be kind of fun the kids seem to enjoy that yeah we we uh do a few variations of dodgeball so uh everybody's included uh, we try not to we try not to do a lot of the elimination games. <coughs> That's part of the catch philosophy. Um, but the kids really enjoy it. We play with very, very soft balls and uh, make sure none of the children are hurt during the process. And the, one of the games that they put, they get an amazing amount of exercise. I go in every now and then <laughs> to play with them, and I got to leave after three or four minutes because I'm like, okay, this is too much for me. I got to it, it, but it's fun. And that's the kids really enjoy that, and the staff really enjoys it, and they have a great rapport with the with the kids, and that's the bottom line. They they're making memories, uh, and we'll have a positive image of the Keene Parks and Rec Department when they grow up. And a big topic that comes over and over again is bullying. Yep. I've only seen or heard of a few minor incidents of bullying over the last couple of years. Your staff is right on it. They seem to take both parents right apart, and they, they go and talk to them, and they yeah. seem to handle it. Otherwise, it's, all the kids just seem to get along is really, really good, really one happy. We focus on teamwork, and um, 
we do train our staff in bullying, uh, you know, prevent, preventative bullying issues, so they are aware of it because they haven't had a chance to experience it yet in a larger setting. So have, we have somebody come in, work with them, understand the concepts, and be proactive in uh, eliminating it right away. And like you said, if I if I know about it, it's past tense uh, because it's already been solved and the problem's resolved. And that's it shows the dedication of our staff. They don't want that in our setting because they know it breeds negative behavior. And it's uh, you know we we try to separate the age groups so the older kids are playing, uh, not against the little kids. And uh, and that's something that we try to work on. We take very seriously. And one other thing is you're talking about up to 70 kids. I've, I've gone there and you have kids the whole gamut of the social economic range. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I have not seen a single incident, maybe I'm blind, but I haven't seen a single incident where some of the kids go into the other kids and say, I'm better than you, my dad or mom makes more money than you. Yeah. Oh. These are just, it seems to be, how, how your staff does it, they need to patent it, but it's, it's kids playing with kids and not no one trying to up one up one and that's and that's part of the whole uh, catch philosophy is um, you know just everybody's an individual uh, and that's it's really the, the staff set the tone and that's what we work with them <coughs> when I talk about being change agents uh, they have to understand their role and responsibility in the bigger picture um, and uh, we're there to get the kids participating, playing, and, and practicing their skills. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. And, it, and last year, this is a great example. Last year when President Obama went into gave the school speech about setting goals, my staff took it upon themselves to talk with the kids after that uh, afternoon and said, this doesn't just talking about school. This is talking about life. And what are some of the goals that we you have and we want you to sit down and write a goal on either physical activity or nutrition. And they had to post that up on the wall. And that's what they lived by for the next month. And then they revisited each goal. So it's understanding the bigger picture and the child and uh, the community as a whole. Uh, I'm a firm believer that it takes a community to raise a child. That's part of the Vision 2020 thing that yep. you talked about. And, making this a great place to live and that's what i want the parks and rec department to be is a great place for your you to bring your children or grandchildren and have a positive experience and let the staff relay that message <clears throat> what i would like to do is i, I just want to roll a short about short three minute video and then what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll talk about upcoming events sure that, yeah. for for the senior center and what's available coming on up and so, <clears throat> well, this is public TV, we're working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're not experts, we're not getting the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, we're back. I hope you enjoyed that little slideshow. We were talking off air about the beauty of the United States and North America, and most of those are all different parks around the, the country. There's a heck of a lot more to the United States than just Disney World or Disneyland. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it, we're very fortunate to live in the country that we do and have the parks that we have, even here in our backyard. And like you were talking about, when you look the, the big companies that here, are here, you got the parks, you got the schools, you got the college, you got downtown Keene, you got the hospital. It's all a package that fits together. It track, attracts people. We just, uh, my class had a reunion recently, and many uh, of the students traveled back, and they said, This is such a great place to live. I don't know why I left. And, you know, at that age, you want to leave, but when you come back and you have families, Keene is a great place to live. The, just the vitality of it, the downtown, as you said, the schools, the parks, the hospitals. We're, we're very fortunate to live where we do. <clears throat> and now we're going to talk about some of the upcoming events. You're talking the peanut um, carnival? The peanut carnival is uh, August 3rd, which is uh, Tuesday, August 3rd, from 6 to 8 p.m. <coughs> uh, this has been a, a long-standing tradition for the Parks and Rec Department. It's... Uh, a lot of carnival games, uh, very affordable. Uh, it's 50 cents for a bag of peanuts or three bags for a dollar. You go around, you're paying <laughs> peanuts. Uh, and we probably should be looking at uh, creating a more environmentally friendly event for those who have <coughs> peanut allergies. Um, and we're taking a look at that, not for this year, obviously, but for next year. Um, so, But it is a lot of fun. Come out and enjoy. Uh, it's, it's an annual tradition. Yeah, the, the playground folks, uh, the staff put on, and they just have a lot of fun with it. Um, one one event that's a, a, it gets me all the time. It's just the name, <laughs> the Cats Program, and it has nothing to do with cats. No, it's the <laughs> it's the Canine Agility Training uh, Program for uh, uh, obviously dogs, canine. Yeah. But uh, that th they have two shows a year in uh, Wheelock Park. And the last one was in June. They have another one coming up September 18th and 19th. And that, uh, if you get a chance to go out and visit, uh, do so. Because there's tons of handlers, uh, thousands of handlers out there doing different can uh, agility training with their dogs. And these dogs are amazing. They fly through the obstacles. And the command that they, their owners give is wonderful. Um, it's a great sight to see, uh, and it's a great utilization of Wheelock Park, and good for the economic impact of the city of Keene. Uh, there's another dog show this weekend, uh, August 7th and 8th, Cheshire Kennel Club. Uh, that's a different, uh, it's more of the show dog. But anytime we have these dog shows come into the city of Keene, you know, they're staying overnight, they're eating at the restaurants, uh, they're staying in the campground. So the economic impact that these shows have is pretty significant and uh, well-received. And they, they, don't, they also pay their way. The CATS program donates money to the city each year. Yeah, they, they pay for the, the maintenance uh, portion of the uh, Wheelock Park. Mm -hmm. And then they, on top of that, they make a donation to the city uh, for the use of the park. Um, so we cover our maintenance costs, and then they make a donation. I think which the is, last one was like 500 bucks. Yes, yep. Um, <coughs> so, and they do two shows, so $1,000 goes to the improvements of Wheelock Park. And uh, like all users, they want to see the park improved. Not that it's, uh, it's, we have pretty good standing now, but there's always little things that, you know, if we were able to get $1,000 to help up upgrade the electricity, that's not going to come out of our general operating mm -hmm. budget that helps us save money. So these events are a good thing. And one that's really important because school starts in a few weeks, we we're talking about the Catch Kids Club. How yeah. do people sign up? What's the age requirement? What's, how do they sign up to get the yep. child? There? The, the, uh, you have to be <coughs> six years old uh, to participate. State in of state law because you're not ch child care. It, exactly. We're not child care exempt, so it is, it, uh, we, we are exempt. Uh, so it has to, the child has to be six years old to participate, um, which I know makes it difficult because <coughs> a lot of kindergartners are five. Uh, but because of the law, we have to be six. Um, and we take them up through fifth grade. And um, the program runs uh, from 3 to 5.30. Uh, 
The children usually arrive uh, between 3.30 and 4 o'clock. What they do is you make a request to the school or the bus company to be dropped off at the recreation center. If you say if you don't attend Franklin School, <coughs> at Franklin School we have a staff person that goes down, walks the kids from Franklin back to the recreation center. Um, so it's all always staffed uh, under uh, under our guidance. Um, and like I said, we, we help with homework, get the physical activity component in, do some nutrition awareness. Quality program, sign up now because it will sign up, uh, fill up very fast. And opening the first day of school this year, uh, probably will, people will sign up a little bit sooner than later. So don't delay. Uh, the cost is $175 for the year. And so if I have a child that goes to St. Joseph or if I have a child that's homeschooled, that doesn't prevent them from signing up either? Not at all. Uh, <coughs> anybody is welcome in that age group. Um, uh, for homeschool, we certainly would meet the, the PE requirement. And um, if, uh, you know, to go to St. Joe's or Trinity Christian, uh, either one of those schools, you're, you're welcome. And you're on the bus anyway. Yes, <clears throat> yep. And so we're also talking about you have a payment plan too, so. Yeah, we, um, we break it down into uh, three installments. Um, it used to be $165, so it was $55 uh, three times for the year. We've increased it $10 to $175. Uh, not a significant increase, but a, a little uh, percentage. And so, you know, breaking it down for parents to pay on a, a three quarters rather than all up front certainly makes it more uh, of a viable option for them so they don't have that hardship right up front. Well, if you put it in perspective, let's see, if I go to Rick Center, uh, a soda is a buck and a quarter. You can <laughs> attend our at the school, school for program. less than a quarter. Yeah, yeah. yeah less than a Coke a day. Yeah, so, uh, and we encourage you not to drink the, the Coke. Coke. So, <laughs> Uh, that's good. You're putting money in your pocket. You're putting money in your pocket, and it's safer. And so if mom and dad's working, they understand my child's in a safe area. Yeah. And the summer program only goes to 4. How? What's the last pickup time on catch? Uh, 530. 530. So, yeah. And we, you know, if, if <clears throat> there's occasionally when, you know, a parent can't make it, uh, doesn't get out of work until 5 or 5, uh, 530, as long as we know that, we're able to accommodate. We always have somebody on staff right through uh, till usually 9 o'clock. Uh, not that I would encourage a parent to <laughs> leave their child because uh, they would be getting multiple phone calls from our staff saying, where are you? Um, but we do have that option, uh, um, you know, 530, which is very reasonable for, for parents. Here's a question all parents want to ask. What about school vacations? Then we have, um, we still are open. Uh, we have uh, our open gym and game room, uh, which last year was $10 for the whole school year. That's the membership fee? For the membership fee. That might increase slightly as did the catch uh, program. Only because it's same hours as the catch. Catch is a structured program uh, where you have a lot of staff taking care of the needs of the children. The open gym and game room is uh, three, four supervisors on making sure the children uh, behave. They return the balls in the, in the gym and they put the games back and that sort of thing. And they'll play, and, but they won't, they'll probably help with the homework, that sort of thing, but it's not structured and it's more free time. And usually those children come in, uh, they can come and go as they please, even though our staff you know, keeps, an, keeps yeah. tab on them. But it's, uh, it's really not, there's no structure to it. Uh, that's the difference between the two programs. And the, uh, was it last year you had a couple of overnight sleepovers mm -hmm. for, for the kids? We had, you had that running event, raising money? Yeah, we, our staff, and those are all things that our staff comes up with. Uh, they're like, oh, we want to do this. You know, we had the overnights a couple times where uh, the catch program, and they were physically active all through the <laughs> night. And one of the times they were, uh, walking around the gymnasium, uh, raising money. So it was, they did positive things for the community. Um, and I know they also did a few uh, family nights where they invited the families in for a healthy meal. And then they did physical activity. 
uh, which is a lot of fun. You know, when the parents come into the program and say, I want to play. Okay, you can. And here's the night and here's a recipe to bring for a healthy option. Hopefully that recipe is being made more than that. Just that one time they're eating that maybe on a regular basis or learning uh, different uh, nutritional values uh, that they can bring home. So, and they are participating with other families and talking about the program and it, it begins to grow. And to, because we're getting close to the end of the time, yep. we've been talking a lot about the kids. Let's talk about ball games, gambling, flower shows. Yes. The bigger kids. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, parks and Recreation is for everybody, all generations. And uh, we have a multitude <clears throat> of trips that we always offer. We do a rail and sail trip coming up in September. We're up to Lake Winnipesaukee on the railroad and on uh, the uh, Mount uh, Washington cruise. Uh, the Big E is always a very popular yep. trip. We take a couple vans down. I think our wicked trip uh, down to the um, uh, Boston Opera House is sold out, um, but we have a few others that are, are happening, and um, we're always planning trips, and whether it be to Foxwoods or someplace else. But keep a, an eye. We got Celtics games coming up in the spring. Uh, usually in January, the Red Sox trips get announced, and. Uh, it's always a fun time, so we always have plenty of activities for everybody. Walking programs, toddler programs, you name it, we've got it. <clears throat> because then also you have a number of um, athletic leagues too, right? Yep. You have soccer and other... And our fall soccer program is coming up. We have, um, it's three age groups, K1, 2, 3, and 4, 6, $35 for residents, $50 for non-residents. We need volunteer coaches. It's a five-week commitment, 10 games. We do it during the weeknight, no weekends. And uh, we have a, one of the games is under the lights uh, to give everybody a chance to do that. But it really works out well with schedules, so we're not tying families up on the weekend. Um, all our coaches are criminally background checked, so we, we know we have uh, quality instructed coaches. Uh, we do a, a clinic with them to give them some soccer skills and background knowledge. And the purpose of our recreation program, the bottom line, similar to our after-school program, is fun. Uh, we want the kids to go out and say, yeah, I played soccer. And if they want to go to a competitive level, then we can provide them their opportunities at different resources. But our focus is fun and enjoy the time out, get some exercise, and get introduced to soccer. And, and we're like Puck. Is it just limited to rollerblade hockey, or do you have regular hockey during the winter? In the wintertime, we flood <coughs> the rink, and uh, we do a pretty good job with the ice, and there's plenty of hockey that gets played out there. Uh, I know there's been a strong volunteer effort in the last couple of years to do some repairs to that in an effort. We just re, uh, resurfaced the hockey rink and did the lines down, so... Uh, it's a great facility now, and we've improved the lighting out there. So uh, check it out, whether it be in the uh, – I know the roller derby uh, <laughs> ladies use it in the winter, uh, summertime and uh, along with a lot of the other uh, summer activity folks. Speaking of lights, I've noticed that you got the new lights up at the basketball um, court yes. by Wa Water Street. Yep. Those are uh, ineffective. They're um, on every night till 9 o'clock, uh, so, and they're on a timer. Uh, which is great through this uh, company, and it's all digital as far as the sunset. So when uh, in June, when the sun wasn't setting until 8.59 and the lights came uh, off at 9, they wouldn't come on at all. So it's saving the, the city quite a bit of money to be on this type of timing system. And, uh, you know, as the summer goes on, they'll be on a little bit more, but we saved a lot of money early on. And... Uh, it's great, and if it's raining out and I need to cancel it, I can do it all from my cell phone or from the web, uh, which is a nice thing to do so we don't have to go down there every time we need to turn the lights off. Now, segue right from the, the web right into your Facebook page? Yes, we, have, we now have a Facebook page uh, for Parks and Rec where we have all the updates uh, and programs and photos that, of the different events that we just had uh, or are having upcoming. So 
If you'd like to uh, get updates on all our programs, go to the Facebook page and uh, become a friend and you'll get all our, our links and updates. And, uh, and then of course, you can also visit our regular web page on the city uh, departments and uh, it's positive, all good stuff. And we have right here your annual big wheel race on Tuesday, next to uh, September 7th. September 7th at 5 o'clock, Durling Field. We have a big wheel race where uh, the, the racers are three to eight years old. The, the winners walk away with a trophy and everybody has a certificate. It's a lot of fun. We announce the kids as they race around <laughs> the, the uh, infield and a lot of fan support, uh, families, volunteers. Just, it is fun. Uh, I, I don't know how to, uh, I smile when I say it because I just, it's one of my favorite events. And, uh, the kids get a big kick of hearing their name on the loudspeaker and the lights are on and the focus is on them for 30 seconds or two minutes, however long it takes for them to get around and everybody's cheering them on and it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, because what parent, what grandparent hasn't seen their kids try to pull wheelies and spin out yeah. with their big wheel? And especially the big wheels aren't around <laughs> like they used to be, so we've kind of kept it alive and uh, it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience. <clears throat> we're going to get to <coughs> excuse me we're going to get ready to roll one little more video sure. so is there anything else that you would like to talk about or we haven't covered during this i think we've covered a lot of it um you know it's just be sure to check out our our web page at the the city site which is www.ci.keen.nh.us and then click on the departments for parks and recreation or if you become a facebook page there's a lot of information out there. We maintain 16 parks and nine cemeteries. Uh, so we're always busy, on the move, and helping the community be a great place to live. So come experience us and check us out. And for those who didn't get the, the web, it's just easy. Just go to Google City of Keene, and it'll, that'll be the first thing that'll pop up, and yep. you'll, you'll get the web address and write in the departments. And so... We're going to have a few sunsets and sunrises around the country, so hopefully we'll, everyone will enjoy this little three minutes of um, videos, and maybe some people get jealous and they'll get in their cars and go visit our country. Great. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank you. <clears throat> I think we covered quite a bit. I think so, definitely. <clears throat> Coming up. Yeah. Well, you know, te technical difficulties. That's no big deal. <laughs> it's part of it's, life, isn't that's it? That's part of life. You know <laughs> what? You do it, you adjust. We, we don't. That's no big deal. <clears throat> we don't have the big budget. We just go along with the flow. We try to provide information. Okay, there's no problem at all. And again, I want to thank you for, for being here. We oh, covered a, a great deal. And um, so if anybody has questions, be free to, um, be free to call Andy Bohannon or any of his staff. You've got great staff. We do. And, Very um, fortunate. One of the other things that, real quick before we talked about, <clears throat> you're, you're new at the um, rec center. You're replacing about 100 years of experience. Is that kind of awesome or daunting at times? It's uh, both. Uh, <coughs> you know. Brian Manson was there for 38 and a half years, did an amazing job, uh, built some of the, you know, the treasures that we have. And um, his, his staff, uh, Bob Rober and Dave Kyle, were both there for quite a lengthy time. So between the three of them, over 100 years uh, left. And, um, but we have some new staff here with some new ideas and, and going with uh, a lot of the same direction. Uh, and some enhancements and I haven't got anything but great things to say about all three of those gentlemen they did amazing things for the city of Keene and we're very fortunate and now it's my turn to continue on that tradition and provide quality experiences for the people of Keene from what I've heard they taught you well yeah I hope so they, <coughs> they're great people and oh yeah one one quick one the big construction pile behind the rec center yes what people keep asking what is that for that What's is going to happen that is sur site uh for their materials mm -hmm. on the construction down washington street and we're in uh 
talked with them, kind of did a little negotiation before that to say, okay, if you want to do this, and maybe what's in it for us. And the result is we're going to have a walking path in front of the recreation center on that front lawn. It's going to be a, a loop that you can walk five or six times around to get one mile, uh, which is going to help our catch yep. program. Uh, the other piece in the back is we're looking at building a basketball court for the neighborhood. So an outdoor basketball, uh, an outdoor basketball court. And um, I think that will be a positive thing. Uh, the, the neighborhood is young. Uh, uh, comes to our park all the time, uh, you know, then they don't have to go on the other side, not that Water Street's that far, but uh, we think that'll be a positive thing for the neighborhood, so that's what we want to do. Okay, and so that should be the end of our show, and I um, thank, thank everyone for listening and, and watching, and you have any questions, be free to co feel free to contact any of us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>